We are standing with our backs to a grey roller shutter door, looking down an alleyway. We can see the steeple of a church in the distance, and to the left there is an apartment block. There are numerous satellite dishes sticking out of the building, little faces with long noses all pointing in the same general direction. To the right there is a big blue steel gate and a low brick wall. From over the wall we hear a sort of keening coming from the other side. It's plaintive, maybe it wants something. We're not too sure what to do, so we shuffle for a little while. Then suddenly it stops, goes silent. We shuffle some more. Suddenly it starts back up again, this time several octaves higher and more insistent. If it wants something, we certainly don't know what it is. The satellite dishes to the left on the apartment block, which have been still up to now, hum to life, an electrical buzzing filling the air around them. In unison, they swivel up toward the sky, which has begun to darken. Little drops of rain fall from clouds, which are growing thick and purple, roiling like a giant duvet being shaken out. Lightning streaks across the clouds, and a low rumble of thunder can be heard, as well as felt, right in the base of our skulls. The lightning arcs, from the clouds above and strikes the satellites, dancing there between them like a thing alive. The air is charged with static. Our hair may stand on end and those with dental fillings can feel them tingle in their mouths. The lightning flares brighter than the sun as the satellite dishes gather power and swivel back down, aiming directly over the wall. And with an almighty surge, they shoot the lightning across the alley, over the divide, at the thing behind the wall. It takes a good ten seconds, a thick rope of white lightning splintering off from the satellite dishes to the thing over the wall. It splutters and is finished. The satellite dishes sag. They seem tired. The clouds, now looking distinctly less threatening, float away, leaving blue skies overhead. There's a slight smell of burning, as if the air has been seared clean. Now, there's no trace of the lightning. The thing over the wall makes a sort of squeaking sound, like the sound of melted rubber cooling off. We hear a throat-clearing cough from over the wall, and then... (coughs) Thanks. The satellite dishes turn to each other for a moment, then begin rotating in every direction. They appear to be quite pleased with themselves. From behind us we hear a clanging mechanical sound. The dishes react immediately, turning to face the roller shutter door. We do the same, backing up into the alley to see what is going on. The shutter door rolls up, slowly, taking about 15 seconds to do so. The crunching and grinding exposes only blackness. We can't see very far into the gloom. As our eyes peer in, we see an old computer monitor squatting in the gloom. In the gloom. Although it doesn't appear to be plugged in, the screen is green and there's that telltale flashing of the cursor in the top left hand corner. We wait. The satellite dishes wait. The thing behind the wall waits. The cursor moves, spelling out the following question Did it hurt? The question hangs in the air. A little icon of an envelope appears in the bottom right of the old computer monitor and flashes. We can almost feel the information travelling through the air, molecule to molecule, past us, maybe even through us, to the thing behind the wall. One, two, three. It stirs, sounding like a packet of straws being upended onto a formica worktop. The coughing voice from behind the wall asks, (coughs) Did what hurt? The computer cursor moves down the screen and punches out the following. When you fell from heaven. The cursor hesitates for a moment, then quickly moves backward, deleting the last three words. It seems to be correcting itself. It retypes so that the screen now says, Did it hurt when you got electrocuted? The envelope icon flashes again. One. Two, three. The satellite dish is led a long, low. 
The thing behind the wall seems offended. There's a hopping, a tutting, and then silence. This is getting awkward. Wanting to know what's going on, we go to the blue gate on our left and try to look through the gaps. Inside, we can see a forest of little light bulbs sticking up out of the ground. They're arranged in neat rows, close together, but with spaces in between. They're faintly glowing. Maybe this is what all that electricity was used for. Something is thrown from over the wall, narrowly missing our heads, to land in front of the computer screen. It's a light bulb, ripped up from the earth with wires dangling like roots from its prongs and a filament flickering in the darkness of the roller shutter doorway. The glass begins to melt, leaving the filament exposed to the air. It works its way upright, like a thin metal worm nosing the air. It rises upward, detaching from the broken body of the light bulb, and still glowing, hovers at the height of our hearts in midair. It shapes itself into letters, leaving a wake of luminescence as it writes the following in the darkness. Ain't no gain without pain. It spirals around in one spot, making the full stop, and then drops like an anchor to the ground, going dim. The computer monitor blinks black, then back to green. All previous words are gone, and now, in bold, in the centre of the screen, are the words, I see. The thing behind the wall makes a satisfactory sound. The roller shutter door begins to come down, and we move to make sure we're not in its way. We look up. At the surface of the building we are facing. It stretches away from the roller shutter door, away from us, above and back toward the way we came, down the alley, matte grey and striated. The surface seems to undulate, and the grooves coalesce into shapes which become words, big and brave and standing out in bas relief on the building. We read, but I don't understand. Another shimmer, and the words are erased. No trace of them remains. The remaining tension in the atmosphere dissipates. Perhaps there is no further clarification.